Hey guys, Tony Maritato here, physical therapist. And in this video, I'm gonna go through the Harvard Health website's seven exercises to do for frozen shoulder. Now, they've got a great article. I might not necessarily agree with every exercise they've chosen, but in this video, you're gonna see a demonstration of each of the seven exercises. And I'm gonna talk about some of the things that clients might not realize how or why they're supposed to do those exercises when they're supposed to do it so let's start with exercise number one it's called the pendulum these are also called codman exercises but essentially when you think of the shoulder the shoulder is essentially made up of three bones we've got the humerus which is the upper arm bone the clavicle which is the collar bone and the scapula which is your shoulder blade those three bones come together and they actually create the shoulder structure and that floats over the rib cage. So if you think of my arm, my arm could weigh eight to 12 pounds. It's hanging there. When I relax the musculature, the arm sinks down and we create a little bit of space inside the shoulder joint. The rotator cuff is four muscles that surround the shoulder but within the shoulder joint, when somebody has a painful shoulder, an arthritic shoulder, it's the joint surfaces usually that are causing the pain or have the degenerative change. So the goal of the pendulum is to relax the shoulder, create a little bit of a, of a suction cup effect. So the weight of the arm is pulling down and the musculature is totally relaxed. Typically, if you imagine my left shoulder is the one involved in the exercise, Typically, we want a client to be close to horizontal, close to parallel with the ground. The involved upper extremity is just relaxed and hanging down. And the way I know that the therapist, rather the patient is doing it right, is as the body moves, the extremity trails. If your wrist and hips are moving together in exactly the same sequence, your shoulder is too tight. What should happen is my hips move forward, my hand follows, my hips move back, my hand follows, and it's just a dead weight on a string. Think of a pendulum just like this. Imagine that's your hand and your shoulders up here. As I swing back and forth, it's just a relaxed gliding motion. That's what we want to achieve through the shoulder. So typically we'll do about 20 front to back. We'll do about 20 side to side. You can do circles clockwise, counterclockwise. You can also experiment with your hand position. When my hand is relaxed, it's usually facing the body. As I rotate my hand over, it's gonna expose different structures of the shoulder. So that is the pendulum exercise. The next exercise on the list is the towel internal rotation. Now, if you have a pulley system, I like it. They're really inexpensive. This is by Rangemaster. They do an amazing job. They've got really great quality. So. Instead of using a towel, I'm gonna to use the pulley system because it's got the handles. And essentially what I'm gonna do, I roll it, flip it over my shoulder, I bring it down to meet my hand where it is. And so in the traditional way of doing the towel internal rotation, internal rotation is this motion here. The towel would be pulled up, the hand is gonna move up the spine, my knuckles are literally on my spine. And as my range of motion improves, I can get that a little bit higher. Now, what happens in the clinic and what patients tend to do wrong is they tend to allow the shoulder to spill over the front. This isn't really a beneficial posture for us. It's more important that we keep our chest up, our head up. Even if we don't get as much range of motion behind us, we would always rather you have better quality movement than more movement without proper form, proper technique. So I would pull up, I get my knuckles to my spine, I relax the shoulder down and back, and then I would drape the towel or the pulley over my opposite shoulder to act as an anchor. This could be a position I spend 20 to 30 seconds in, I release the tension and relax it. If I don't have the range of motion to come up this way, an alternative would be across the back of the body. And so as I'm pulling across, I might go from my left, same side pocket, sacrum, opposite side pocket. Usually once you've gotten to this point, then we can start going up toward the opposite side shoulder blade. These are internal rotation stretches, but they should also include scapular retraction. 
The next exercise on the, the website is called finger walks. Now the way this is typically done is the individual would place their hand against the door or a wall. They would walk their fingers up the wall. The problem with that exercise typically is we see a lot of compensation in the clinic. We see a lot of shoulder hiking. So people are lifting at the shoulder to get the hand higher. It's just not a very effective strategy for that. I'm going to show you two alternatives. So if you have a shoulder pulley system, you can use the shoulder pulley system to assist with finger walks. I'm going to adjust this handle just to shorten it. And essentially what it is, it's my left shoulder that's the involved shoulder, the painful shoulder. As I pull on the right hand down, the left hand is being pulled up the wall. You certainly can use your fingers to walk with it or not, it doesn't really matter too much. But the idea is that my right non-involved non side is actually gliding the left side up the wall. You bring it up to the point of stretch, you bring it up to the point of discomfort but not pain. You might hold a position for 10, 20, 30 seconds and then you release the pressure. Again, the primary objective here is to keep the shoulder low. So don't hike the shoulder. The shoulder shouldn't come up toward your earlobe. It should be down. As the hand goes up, we'll hold the position 30 seconds, let it come back down. An alternative version for the finger walks up the wall would be a simple towel, towel, pillowcase, any kind of cloth, you would place it against the, a smooth wall and you would glide up and you would glide back down. You can hold the top position 20 to 30 seconds, come back down. What's important to, to understand is that when I'm using the pulley system, even though the hand is going up, the muscles under the shoulder are actually pulling down, which tends to be a better position for the glenohumeral joint than when I'm doing a traditional finger walk or I'm doing a towel slide because when I'm doing a towel slide I'm actually using the muscles on top of the shoulder to lift the humerus more than the muscles underneath. So just considerations, things for you to think about. If it's painful, move on to the next exercise. The next exercise on the Harvard website is the crossbody reach and there's a couple ways we can do this. This stretch is probably most commonly seen in golfers or tennis players. If it's the left shoulder that we're stretching, the left arm reaches across the body, the right hand comes underneath. And there's two things that I'm really thinking about. I'm thinking about bringing it around my body, but I'm also thinking about keeping that shoulder nice and low. Typically, we're thinking about bringing the inside of this elbow toward the inside of the opposite shoulder but the priority is low through the shoulder. When I press down through the shoulder, I create space between my earlobe and my shoulder, I can feel that stretch engage in the posterior capsule. That's what we're trying to stretch. If I just cram that shoulder up into my chin, up into my ear, I'm not getting stretch. In fact, I'm getting pinching at the SC joint or the AC joint. So I reach around my body, I relax that shoulder down, I get a little bit of pressure in toward my opposite side shoulder, I'll hold this stretch for 30 seconds, relax the tension, repeat as indicated. The armpit stretch is the next stretch in the series. On the website, the person is doing it standing at a tall counter, they put their hand there and they sit down into it. Since I don't have a tall counter, and many of you won't, we're gonna use a countertop, kitchen counter, table, desk, anything like that. And typically what we're gonna do, we're gonna come into this position, the hands resting comfortably on the countertop. And so you can understand at this level, if 90 degrees of flexion is parallel with the floor and level with the shoulder, I'm at less than 90 degrees of flexion right now. But as I slide my hips back in the chair and lean forward, this position, if I froze it in time, is the same as this position. So the more horizontal I get, I'm stretching under the arm, I'm stretching the lat, the teres, the musculature that pulls down on the shoulder. 
but this is also the musculature that restricts overhead reaching. So we'll get down into this position, we'll hold it for a 30 second stretch, we'll take the pressure away, and then we can repeat as indicated. Now, as the article gets into two of the strengthening exercises, which are common across almost every physical therapy program, they talk about a resisted external rotation, resisted internal rotation. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do it with a simple pillowcase, towel, but then I'll also show you a couple pulley exercises that you can do for resisted internal external rotation. Typically, we want the elbow bent to 90 degrees. We want the arm resting comfortably at your side. If you've been in physical therapy, they might put a little cushion or pillow underneath you just to get the elbow off the rib cage somewhat. It's not that important if you don't have that available. But one way to work, external rotation, one of my favorite ways to do it without any other device, is to hold a simple pillowcase or towel in the palm of the arm we're working. We want to be palm up position, and my other hand is going to be the resistance. So my right hand is pulling away against the movement of my left. As I resist this motion, it's concentric external rotation. As I resist the pull in, that would be eccentric internal rotation. Some tendinopathy, tendinitis conditions respond really well to an eccentric program. So talk to your physical therapist if they want you to do it concentrically, eccentrically, both. But this is a resisted external rotation for the left shoulder. Now, if I want to do resisted internal rotation, it gets a little more tricky. But essentially what I have to do is come across my body and resist the pull in. The other way I can do it is simply push out on my left wrist as I'm pulling back in. So now I've got concentric internal rotation and I've got eccentric internal rotation because my right is overpowering my left. These two motions, while they look almost identical, are completely opposite, working different musculature within the shoulder. Now, if you're looking to use your shoulder pulley system, Typically what I do is I bring it down about the level of the doorknob. I come away. Again, we're thinking about my left hand as the side that I'm working. So I can do an eccentric internal rotation when I'm resisting my right. I can do a concentric internal rotation against the resistance of my right. I can flip around. I've got concentric external rotation, concentric internal rotation. I could do isometric by putting both handles in one hand. I get to a certain angle and I'm trying to rotate out, but because the ropes won't let me, this creates an uh, isometric external rotation. And of course, isometric internal rotation. That is a video demonstration of the exercises that were put out on the Harvard Health website. If you have questions, if you have thoughts, please talk to your physical therapist. Let them know you've watched this video and that you would like to know if these exercises would be appropriate for you. As always, thank you so much for your support, for watching the channel. And if you want to subscribe, we're putting out content every single day to help people at home better understand how to manage their shoulder pain, how to improve their home shoulder program exercises, and get back to doing the things that they love. Guys, I'll catch you on the next video.